thank you for hanging out and sticking with us. I've got the cast of Buffalo Women up here with me. We've got Achelle, Nadia, Brandy, I'm Bofield, and this is Catherine McHolmes. She's gonna moderate the conversation for us. We don't wanna keep you guys too long. Thank you for being out in all this heat. Um, so I think first we wanna open it. You, you start, you're moderating. I don't, <laughs> this is who we are. This is why we're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, I would really love to open up just by hearing um, some thoughts from the cast and then maybe open up for questions if anyone wants to, um, either ask questions or just give thoughts or comments, feedback, stuff like that. Not feedback. The show is already perfect. We don't need feedback. <laughs> My bad, I led you astray I'm, already. I'm not accepting notes <laughs> at this point. Yeah, I was like, just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know who wants to jump in, but like, I would just love your like thoughts on the show, what it's like, what your character's like, what the other characters are like, all the uh, things. I, um... Absolutely love the like all the black girl power uh, running throughout this show. Um, I think it's 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 like informed like the atmosphere of our rehearsals and everything, and it's just been the whole experience. Um, there's been parts that were difficult, like difficult to reconcile with, but. Overall, it's just been like a really like healing and uplifting experience. And um, I feel like telling these stories of these women is um, such a power powerful thing and uh, very necessary, very necessary for us to know these stories and to ingest these stories and to I don't know, just take on that, that, that power that they had, that strength, I don't know, I just. I was waiting for that fan to come out. Mm. <laughs> and, and, and do with the other hand. Sign out. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, this, no, you. That was me. Was that you? Yeah. You. <laughs> no, you. <laughs> you and me. Um, I would say that the, I've never felt more safe, like mentally or emotionally safe in a rehearsal process than this one. Um, and that's in large part to both like Bo and our stage manager, Chris, who like, like was always like, are y'all good? We come into rehearsal and we've all had a bad day. Bo's like, it's okay. We will wait an hour. We'll do like, we'll decompress before we get into this really deep work. Um, so. She said, telling all of our business. I said, don't tell Nobody all our pointed business. you out. I did not even say <laughs> no, anything. It was your bad day. It could have been my bad day. You, I said we, I plural. I that bad day. Yeah, the show is over. It That's dynamic. <laughs> it was my bad day. <laughs> um, you know, we started writing this show at, at, back in July of last year. For, I mean, it's like you could pick any time and place and you're fresh off of the, the death, the the media sensationalized death of another black person. You could pick any time and that's where you are. And this time it was here, it was James Gerlach's death. And, uh, and I got the idea for this musical during Red Summer. So I'm already in that world, right? But it's like wanting to take all of the pain that all of my characters have been through. And it's like, let's just talk about What's it look like when you carry your trauma with you everywhere you go? Like you've got that backpack on, you can't take that backpack off, but you have to survive. You have to, you have to keep moving. You have a mission to keep moving. You still find joy in small places. You still find safety with sisters. You still find peace in a slow cup of coffee. You know, none of that trauma leaves you, but how do people realistically muddle through it? And the second part of that is, why don't we know? I, I am literally, I have called myself a historian because I've watched a lot of history. <laughs> History.com, I have a lot of uh, subscriptions to a lot of apps. I have, I have a lot of books, okay? Um, I have a passion for history. Why am I just finding out about William Cafe, Cafe William in 2019? Why am I just finding out about Stagecoach Mary, this amazing black woman who we're gonna meet later, 
who rode the stagecoach up and down, left and right, smoked cigars, killed people. If you messed with her, you were dead. Why am I just finding out about these figures of, of the Western world at 36 years old during my own research? Yet our schools were fighting for, over critical race theory. And it's like, do you wanna wait until you come to the theater in 2021 to learn shit? Or do you want your kids, or you wanna set your kids up better than you were set up? You know, like I think about that all the time because I'm like, man, we've got so many hidden figures. We shouldn't be like nominating the movie Hidden Figures for an Oscar in 2018, but yet we're not gonna talk about them in our classrooms or in our personal conversations, you know? So it was the most important that we get these chicks up on stage and just, man, we just meet the Wild West through their eyes. No, absolutely. And I, uh, I appreciate, I always appreciate your like ability to intermix, to bring characters to life, um, especially because you tend to like three dimensionalize in a way that I think uh, only a black playwright can do. Um, I remember Red Summer and Will Brown, and it was just, uh, it was incredible to watch this person come to life in a way that was more about the life that he lived and less about what was done to him. Um, and I also appreciate you bringing up CRT because that was on Thursday um, with the learning community. And so it's this ever, like never ending battle just to have these full dimensional stories told. Um, and I'm wondering, like, you're talking about, I'm hearing um, Brandy and Nadia talk about like this healing space. And I'm wondering if we can talk, uh, cause we know in 2021, uh, especially after last summer with We See You White American Theater and all of that, um, to talk about the importance of having safe healing theater experiences, I think is deeply necessary. Uh, Nadia, <laughs> what is happening? Oh, <laughs> sorry. You had this whole uh, phase like, I yeah. don't know if I want to talk about that no, right there now. No, there was just like a whole like train of thought that just like, oh. psh, psh, psh. <laughs> we saw it, we saw it cross through your face. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just like talk about what, like as much, right, as you are willing to uh, share with us, share with the audience, like talk about what it is, what it is to have black theater, especially here in Omaha. Mm. Oh. It's, it's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll talk for a second, only because I'm the oldest one up here. And so I actually, uh, back when I started doing theater in 1985, six, somewhere right there, um, I did a lot of theater at, my first community theater show was at a, a place called Center Stage. And, um, after it was center stage, it was, uh, I think that's where John Beasley actually had his theater as well for a little bit. But center stage was where I started and it was considered the black theater in our, in Omaha. And it was at the Laferne Williams Center off of 30th and Q. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. honestly, like yeah. being that my first three shows were there with a bunch of black people, I have really, I feel like my journey has been very interesting because I started in a, in a safer space as a youth, and I was taken very, very good care of by the people that were in that organization. They did not, we were safe, and that, that was a definite thing. Um, so as I got a little older though, and that went away and then we didn't get it back and we got nothing back to replace, we got nothing to replace it. That's when I feel like we lost our voices um, and we lost the ability to um, stand up for ourselves properly because it then became something that it isn't, which is uh, people thinking that we're complaining or that we want more than someone else or that we're, we're not oh, just taking what we're getting. And it's like, yeah, but you guys don't understand that we are always on the outside right now of theater. Like black folks are always on the outside of theater right now. When people say things like, we have to work 50 times harder to get in the chorus, they mean it. 
So what does it mean to have this? Fucking everything. everything. Yeah. yeah. Because I walked in here every night and was like, yeah. <laughs> Just because we could look at each other and say, you good, girl. You good? We good. We'll get this. We're fine. We need a minute. We don't need a minute. You know, it scares people because we come together in different ways and people expect us to work on a specific timeline or a, like you're supposed to have this schedule and that's how you do it. And we work a little differently than that. Um, when Bo was talking about uh, carrying um, the trauma, uh, yeah, we don't get to take our trauma off ever. Ever. That's not a thing. It's not a cloak. It's skin. It's who we are. So to be able to come here and, and understand it with folks who are willing to give you the space. We talked about this a little bit last night with our stage manager, Chris, because Chris would walk in a room, and if we were having a conversation, Chris would stop and he would breathe, and we would stop, and then he would give us the information. And that was something new. That's unusual to have space. So I just took up a lot of it, but that's where I'm coming from <laughs> being, take more. Take your space. being who I am. So. Reclaim your time. Reclaim your time. <laughs> when we, we walked into the first rehearsal, and it was at my house, um, <laughs> And we hadn't seen, I mean, we, hadn't, we haven't done theater in a year. And then we haven't seen each other. Not that we could like touch and like, No, you know, you know not in the same way. So when everybody was in my house and we were like, I don't know, it was emotional. I was like, I got sandwiches, I got chips. <laughs> she had lattes so and everything. <laughs> the snacks for you. <laughs> and then we just like hugged and cried and just, and then, and then we got, and then we got to work. And then to hear, you know, voices, <laughs> to hear voices, and, and uh, it, it's just been a really, it hasn't been stressful. Mm. It hasn't been stressful. From the tip top, um, it was like, we all have kids, we have lives, there's a lot going on in the world, <laughs> right? Except Nadia. Nadia, Nadia's Nadia got, has Nadia's got, 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 Nadia's Nadia's got, got a kids. Nadia's got kids. Nadia has her own, her own group of kids right. she teaches. So. Right. She's got kids you teach. Mm -hmm. She drives back and forth from Lincoln. I don't want to rehearse this till it's dead in the ground. Let's, let's be cool, let's meet each other's, let's meet our lives where they are, right? And that makes all the difference. It, this show doesn't happen on this on this chop chop schedule. I'm, these are human beings who are living in the world. Let me meet you where you are. We all have the same goal. If we have the same goal, we want the show to be the best it can be. We're gonna get there together. But if I'm stressing you out, you're stressing me out. We're not gonna get there. And I think that's like the big. That's a big part of working. Um, with your people with is people understanding where we all are. You, yes. Yeah. And also like working with a black playwright, a black composer. I mean like, y'all, this ain't music you've ever heard before. This is Bo and Jay Isaiah, and then Justin popped in and did some stuff too. He sure did. Are you he kidding me? Playing, playing the, he played the piano in the tambourine at the, at same, the same time. Day. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got Juanisha over here on the violin. Are you kidding me? Juanisha came in on the violin, and then Please. she was like, she went like this one day. Okay, we hit that last song, right? And she was like, <laughs> I'm gonna embarrass myself so bad right now. She was like, <laughs> hold up, see, I know. Look at what you're doing. <laughs> Bo and I can't do it, and we blame our half-white part. See? <laughs> Thank you. Hold on, hold on. See? No, start it out. Do it, do it. Start it out. Okay. <laughs> but she came in doing Done. that shit, and I was twice. like. Twice. I got it twice. <laughs> she did. Oh, I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what's happening? Rhythms. <laughs> <laughs> we blame our 
right, 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 right. So it, along with all that, it was just like the musicians that came in just were like, oh, I got something new. They added to it. And it just, it just, every last one of these songs was written in my shower. Every last one of them. I have the voice notes. I go to the shower to think. I get away from the kids. They, leave, they mostly leave me alone. If I lock the door, I'm good for 10. And I'm like, I have an idea. I have voice notes from the shower saying, okay, this is what I think the song sounds like. And then the song goes out into the world and it just, it just grows. And to hear that song from the seed in the shower to up here, and my girls are singing it, it's like, it's, in, it's incredible to be inside of that process. Watch that magic go like, does this sound good? To Michelle singing, Nadia singing, Brandy singing, Wanisha blowing up this fiddle. I know the fiddle and the violin aren't the same thing, but you know, it's the, <laughs> it's the thing. So that part has just been incredible. And there is something... Uh, that safety factor again, where it's like, just feeling like everything is always, we're always on the same team to get it to the end goal. May I? Thank you. Um, um, I just did a whole year of school and I am, there, out of 15 of us in my, my cohort, I am the sole person of color, not just the only black person, but like the sole person of color. And so I just like, oh, at first rehearsal, I cried because I was like, this is so overwhelmingly black. I love it so much. Like, ah. Uh, um, that's all. <laughs> I, we, and we need to wrap up because we said we take 10 minutes of your time. But I want to say, too, to that, behind, like, writing, oh, okay, why do I want to write a cowgirl musical? Because I found out that there were cowgirls that were black just a couple years ago. Okay, let me learn their stories. And then understanding that the roots of American music are black. The roots of country music are black. The roots of, um, of what we know as rock and roll are black. This is my small way to like reclaim that for ourselves, right? And, and it's something that, you just, that we just don't get to see. And I want our girls to come and see it. And I want our girls to come and see badass, revenge, black cowgirls on the plane rooting, tooting, riding for them. You know, I want that. Um, but I want it now in a way that isn't demonizing Native people. I want it in a way that is involving our stories because you can have slavery stories and Western stories all in one from a black perspective because that shit exists. So here it is. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna say before I just wanna uh, open it up to the audience is the thing that I found really profound um, about this is it would be so easy to have Bafula look like an angry black woman. Um, and right, it would be so easy, except when you think about it uh, and the conversation about softness and thinking about like the armor that black women I don't know what's happening. The armor that black women have to like assemble in order to just be and to just live and like that conversation um, and like you're never ever gonna be <laughs> accused of like making an angry black woman unless she is absolutely righteously angry. Um, but it's so easy to look at that character and to flatten her um, and realistically, like, it really is about like this deep righteous anger and this anger of like, what has been done through our ancestors, like all the way through. And so like the idea of a hundred hands behind the trigger, uh, the idea of her not being angry, but being hurt, because that truly is where the anger comes from. It is hurt, it is pain. And that idea of bringing it, of, of, of talking about, and that anachronism that you introduced us to, and like really threading the needle through the through line for today, um, and the ways in which like, people will talk about angry black women. And it's like, you don't wanna talk about what's behind that because there is righteousness um, in that anger. You wanna flatten the anger down. And so I just, again, Bo, uh, you just create incredible black characters that are just a treat to see and healing to watch. And it sounds like to be, uh, to be in rehearsal and to bring to life. And so I just really appreciate that. So that's what I'm gonna say before I ask if anyone else has anything to say um, from the audience. Thank you. Absolutely. Matt, 
Matthew. So one of the things that I think is so remarkable from like my experience of this tonight is just thinking about like all these moments, and this happened to me during the copy song, where I'm like, oh, I am, I am with these characters, and I'm cataloging all these other emotional experiences I've had with them to that point in the experience. Like uh, Nadia looking at the playwright, and the playwright needs the stage direction that's forcing her to, to do that in the, in the mm. nightmare sequence. And I'm just, I'm wondering if there have been any keys in your process to unlocking the kind of vulnerability that that takes, because, and like for you, Bo, maybe most especially because you know, this is a work in process. It sounds like it's not like finished yet, right? And so like to, to open it up to an audience as well, could you just give some thoughts on like how vulnerability is function for you inside this process? Hmm. Well, this won't surprise you. I had four margaritas yeah, last <laughs> night before I came here because I was very, very, very <laughs> nervous to open up that process. <laughs> this won't surprise <laughs> This will not be of no surprise. Um, also, the vulnerability between me and you guys the vulnerability started with me and these folks. Nadia came up with that look on her own. Susan has been, Susan's been really great about letting me lead. And she knows I'm not a director and I've been turning to her and she's been really great about offering me when I need something. Came up with this idea of stylistically how we run the night with me narrating it. And it's been amazing. Yes, I want to wear a wig. <laughs> Thank you very much, Susan. Um, Nadia came up with that part when she looked at me, and it changed everything for me in that scene. She looked at me like that, and, I re and, and Zadie was real. And, and I'm making her go through that. And it unlocked this thing between us. Um, this point and your point are connected because it's about vulnerability the whole way through. So often we don't get to see black women be vulnerable. That's what the conversation about white women's tears is about. Um, that's what the conversation, that's what the opening scene with Bethula, she's happy, yes, but now she's changed and she's been changed by this action that she did to these two white people that was the result of this action for years that had been done to her. I wanna see her cry. I wanna see her as a fully fleshed human being out before us. And so for me, I have to be vulnerable so that she can be, so that Cafe can let her hair down and say, I got used to being invisible, keeping my head up kept me, keeping my head down kept me alive. Um, if I'm not open, then they can't be open. So we kind of just all have to put it all out on the carpet every, every night and script wise as well. I'm emotional. <laughs> All right, we're gonna, I was gonna do one more and then uh, the lights are getting hot. I don't know how y'all have been up here the whole time, but thank you. Um, I was just afraid to spoke about how empowering these characters are. And I think it's important uh, not only that you do these uh, powerful voices, but you keep speaking them so the uh, white audience will mm. hear you. That's, that's very essential. Uh, second, for you as a playwright, I would encourage you to chase the, the montages. And the <laughs> <laughs> yes, montage. I thought a montage is so essentially Western. And like imagine it with like this background that's orange, red, and yellow. It's a sunset. And then imagine you see just the shadow of them, right? And then a tumbleweed goes by. Like that's the montage. And then it turns into night. And then there's stars in the sky. And then we watch the sun come up again. I think that shit is so powerful. And People say no because they don't, they can't visualize it and because they can't realize it themselves. They don't know how to physically do what it takes to get the vision, but it can be achieved. <laughs> it can do it. Woo! They put Tupac back on stage posthumously. Yes, they did. Y'all can make me a montage. <laughs> I'll leave Tupac out of this. Same I'll, I'll leave Tupac out of it, but I'm just saying. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And thank you for staying.